So there's no, um, we're not going to open with a speech or anything. If you just a general availability, if you guys want to start with questions regarding the state of the state tomorrow. So we just left the Democrats and the uh, Spurs. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But you weren't looking at me, so I can understand that. <laughs> Um, the Democrats are saying that the governor is going to take credit for the um, improvements in the national economy and that the economy is not doing much better than it was in 2008. Do you guys take issue with that? Well, I, uh, I like to say here this afternoon that the governor's policies are working. A uh, good demonstration of that is uh, the current unemployment rate here in Maine is 6.2%. You know, a lot of times the, the criticize the governor saying, well, he's outspoken. He may be outspoken, but his policies are working. And the current unemployment rate is a prime example of that. Senator, I heard, uh, I heard this, uh, this morning on the ride in here that the uh, Canada County Food Bank was uh, demand is at an all time high. And I'm just trying to understand the, ju um, the juxtaposition of that. The economy is, we're growing jobs, but how come so many people are going to the food bank? Well, you know, the food bank is a, is a resource that, that a lot of folks use to supplement their, their households and the needs of their households. And I'm a, I've been a strong proponent of that for many, many years. And a lot of times people will use it to just as a supplement. And I think that's a worthwhile cause we should pursue the future. And I, and I think we all recognize that, you know, really in, in 2008, you know, when the national economy tanked, you know, Maine, Maine went into a tailspin. Um, and, and quite frankly, since the governor's taken office, we, we've really been digging our way out of that. But we also have to recognize that the cost of goods um, haven't, you know, certainly have, have exceeded what I think is the cost of inflation, even in terms of what's reported. The cost to heat a home, uh, the, the cost to buy a pair of sneakers for your kid to go to school, um, the cost of um, insurance, which we've been able to slow down the rate of the increases, but it continues to be, you know, a significant cost for people. Um, so while I think people have been working, there's a lot of stressors in terms of their pocketbooks to. Uh, to make that, that pivoting balance. What around the policies that part of the speech tomorrow might involve bringing right to work legislation back that didn't seem to go anywhere last time around? What do you see happening if that does come up again? Well, yeah, that's a, a very popular concept that's going around the country right now. The state of Wisconsin has great success in that. And uh, right now, the state of Wisconsin is showing a surplus. And uh, I think that's probably something we should discuss. Um, and perhaps bring back um, as legislation sometime within the very near future, probably after Republicans get the majority back. When you talk about more people being employed, I mean, do you, do you mean there are more Mainers pulling down paychecks today than there were a year ago? Is that your position? Yes. And, and that that's what these unemployment figures really mean to you? Most assuredly, yes. Yeah, yeah I, think the, I think the difference is the jobs that are, the, the, the reason why the decrease in the unemployment rate is going down is because people are finding a job. It's not because they're leaving, you know, the job search, you know, which has happened a lot nationally. I mean, let's, let's recognize sort of the context within which we're really talking about. We're talking about an unemployment rate that's gone from 8% down to 6.2% since this governor's taken office. Uh, I believe about a month ago I saw a report that said Maine's income growth was the fastest in New England. Um, and so, you know, things are starting to happen. Things are really moving. Uh, I think they're going in the right direction, a 25% decrease. In a, in a non unemployment rate is, is not insignificant. Is so there a specific um, policy of the governors that's driving this, or policies? Could you guys uh, maybe give us an example of one of the things you think that's helping? Well, I, this was clearly part of the governor's agenda when he first took office, was to reduce the unemployment rate here in Maine and put Maine people to work with good paying jobs with benefit packages so they can pay their mortgages, raise their children. What did you do to get those jobs coming back? That's what I'm trying to. Yeah. Well, I think uh, during the 125th Maine Legislature, we, um, we dissolved a lot of the barriers that handicapped businesses from locating here in Maine and prospering here in Maine. And that was one of the objectives. And also the reduction of Maine taxes. I think that's important to uh, bring forward as well. That when you create a situation where businesses could enjoy profitability uh, better than it was a few years ago, they'll stay here. And it's a very attractive package for new industries to locate here, at least look at me. Democrats are calling on the governor to address some of the concerns of DHHS that he's been largely quiet on, things like uh, the, the CDC documents shredding incident. 
stuff like that. Do you think that would be an appropriate use of the state of the state? Do you think you should talk about that? I, I, I don't. I mean, this is a this is an opportunity for the governor to really talk about what his um, what his track record has been for the last three and a half years in terms of what what has changed in Maine in a positive direction and what his vision is uh, continuing to move forward. Uh, there there is going to be uh, opportunities for uh, ongoing. Um, looks into those issues. Um, the, the governor, I'm sure, is going to cooperate in that. Um, these are not, in many cases, for example, with the Riverview issue, um, you know, these are not new issues. Um, in many ways, these are decade-old issues. And so, um, you know, what we need to continue to do is focus on the big stuff in terms of sending out the messages to, to the other regions of the, of, the, uh, of the country. You know, I, it, one of the things I think that's unprecedented that we need to te recognize is this recent agreement in, in regards to energy, where you have five Democratic governors and, and, and this Republican governor coming together to talk about, you know, how do we lower the electrical prices in Maine in, in using the, the bipartisan Ombudsman Energy Bill that was passed uh, last session. We have the ongoing opportunity for the University of Maine to continue to um, bid and become part of a, a world leader in offshore wind energy. Um, and so I think that there's lots of things that, that we can talk about that are really game changers for uh, for Maine in terms of moving forward. Do you think, so you're, you are anticipating energy would be a boom in his state of the state no. tomorrow? I, I don't know that for sure, but I, I would think that it certainly, I think, is one of the, the most important things that this legislature has done in terms of the work. It's it's done, but I think that the governor at the same time. Okay, getting back to jobs for a second, do you see a direct correlation between the governor's promotion of of cutting welfare in this state and the number of people who are returning to the workforce? Well, I, I think that uh, the governor is always looking for people who are not deserving of the benefits. And that's a constant uh, endeavor of the governor's office. Because if these people don't deserve the benefit, they shouldn't be receiving it because they're taking away from people who really do need it. So I think that's an ongoing uh, condition that exists and the governor's trying to uh, change that. And I applaud him for doing that. You know, a lot of times these benefits are, are very worthwhile. They help a lot of people. But if there's fraud out there, these people don't deserve it. They shouldn't be getting it. Now, as a sitting senator representing Senate District 2 in York County, I hear of this. I have constituents who will call me and say, you know so-and-so is getting these benefits. And I don't think they really deserve it. Well, there's a hotline for that. And I'll refer those, those uh, folks to the hotline. And uh, it's an ongoing situation that has to be cleaned up. And the government's making every effort to do that. I, I'll tell you a, an honest story. Um, working in my office this morning, uh, somebody stopped by, um, had a couple of questions in, in regards to a business issue, and then completely unsolicited, raised to me that the situation where he knew somebody downtown who had a, an EBT card, who was selling their EBT card at 25% of its face value so that they could use the money for something else. Yeah, and they were very upset by it. I mean, those, those are the kinds of stories that we hear. But do you think a lot of these people were, have we joined the workforce? Do you think that we join the workforce because there's been some reduction in the mm -hmm. benefits they used to receive that they're not getting now? Well, I mean, I think the opportunities, I think they recognize that we have more opportunities. I think uh, back to go to 2008 when we had the crash, um, you know, it, it has taken a while. There's no doubt about that for the people to start looking again and what's coming forward. I think one of the areas that we see some real growth in, in the next, I think, six months is going to be housing. You know, they're, they're talking already about the, the prices, the median prices are up, mortgage rates are still down. You know, and so, I mean, again, I think that's a positive uh, direction for us to be moving and it's a big, a big piece of our economy. Has there ever been a, uh, a quid pro quo uh, bargain offered on Medicaid for rent to work, Medicaid expansion for, in exchange for uh, Democrats going along? Has that ever been like, We've heard this like come up like, and I just never, no one's made it legitimate that Republicans were offering, we'll expand Medicaid if you give us right to work. I never. Um, I can say that I, I have been in meetings with Democratic leadership and the governor when the conversation included um, right to work and Medicaid expansion. And sort of that exchange? That a confirmation? I'll, I'll, I'll leave it the way that I just stated it. Is that still part of the conversation? I think that the governor is very interested in right to work, and to the extent that Democrats would be um, have a good faith effort to talk about it, I think that most anything would be on the table. Not that I can speak for the governor. Right. 
how, how um, there, there, are, there are a number of Republicans in both your caucuses that are um, fence, I, I guess on the fence on Medicaid. How are they being, we've been told that they're, they're getting it from both sides. Are, is that true? Have they been, been called into the Speaker's office? I know they've been called into the Governor's mansion. Um, how, how hard are those members getting worked over? Uh, I just speak uh, first hand for that. I have never worked over at all. Um, I have talked to my constituency back home about this. I have a sounding board back home where I call folks, ask their opinions on a number of different topics. And if I get the same kind of answer, a similar type of answer from my sounding board, I, that's the way I go. That's, the way I, that's what I do. For after all, I represent the people. As far as Medicaid expansion, we can hardly keep up now with what the cost of, of uh, that department is for the state of Maine. Uh, they are cannibalizing the uh, total revenue stream uh, for the state of Maine. When you look at the expansion of DHHS services, uh, it just goes on and on and on to a point where it's not affordable any longer. And now, uh, if you want to uh, expand on, on Medicaid, um, I've got to find out, and I have yet to get a clear answer for my question as to how we're going to pay for it. Once the federal money dries up, how is the state of Maine going to pay for these increases in the cost of Medicaid? And I defy anybody to give me an answer because nobody's come forward to me and I've asked the question. When it dries up to the 90% level? Or Still, it's a cost for the state of Maine taxpayers. It has to be figured into the budget. Regardless of what the amount of money is, whether it be $5 million, $2 million, or $3 million, whatever the case may be, in a given year, it has not been explained to me as how we're going to pay for that. And until I get a concrete answer on that, I'm not going to be voting for it. And neither will all the colleagues in, in my caucus, that being the Senate Republican Caucus, until we find out how they, they being the powers to be, uh, majority party at this point, how they plan on paying for it. Okay, just so I'm clear, I want to just real quick, I want to just follow up a little bit on this question. You know, we, we are in the legislative business. You know, we have been elected by um, people to, to come here to debate the issues and to hear people and ultimately to make a judgment in terms of representing a certain number of people, whether it be a House or Senate district. Now, to suggest that people aren't going to be um, called or worked or talked to or um, engaged in, in conversations about, you know, what is the legitimate issue in terms of 4,000 people on a wait list who are severely disabled and how do you pay for those people that are in, in just terrific, horrible need for real services versus the expansion of a program? That is a legitimate conversation for anybody to have with any legislator um, because that's what we do is we're setting policy and, and they should be, everybody should be engaged in that process and we as legislators shouldn't be afraid to, 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 to be engaged in that debate because quite frankly it's what our job is. But the governor left you with the impression that expansion was on the table. Uh, in, uh, in under, certain, under certain circumstances, that expansion of Medicaid could be on the table in this session. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to say that. I think what I want to say is, is is that the governor has clearly set a list of priorities. Right to work is one of the highest priorities that he has uh, and that he's interested in. Uh, Medicaid expansion is not, um, and so. I think that the, the the conversation of what someone might do to get uh, right to work in terms of the context of uh, Medicaid expansion would certainly require more than a five minute conversation. Why is right to work so important if it is in fact on the table as a trade off for Medicaid expansion, which I understand what you said, but I mean, why is that such an important issue for Republicans in your mean? Well, I mean, I, I know the conferences that I'm going to nationally, and when you're talking about the job growth that's going on in this country, uh, particularly down in the south, southeast and out in the Midwest, um, you look at the states of where these jobs are being created, where these companies are moving, it's states where they have right to work. And it, it's just a fact that, that these uh, opportunities for companies to go in where there's lower taxes and where there's right to work, that's where these jobs are going. And I, the fear, I think, in, in terms of the long, for, in some senses, you're creating a country where you have the Northeast, where you have, you know, a significant um, union participation. Uh, you have 
higher cost in many ways than down in the, in the southeast. And how do you compete with that? Adding on to that the cost of electricity. And so what can we do to continue to attract jobs here, not only the Maine, but maybe even the northeast, um, instead of going down to the, down to the southwest? Right to work's not on the table either. That's, I mean, I, it sounds like you're making it sound like that that's in the debate. This is every meeting I've been in, and I'm with all the meetings that he's in, right to work's not on the table, nor has that ever been offered up, nor has that even been part of the equation here. That's just something that, you know, I think happened in the hallway one time as a joke, but I have not heard it, so. Well, the House Minority Leader said earlier that he'd been in conversations with Democrats and the governor where both of those things were talked about. Yeah, in a joking, in a, where I heard the governor one time say it in, as, as a trade-off, and everyone laughed. It was a, I mean, it, it's it's not a, something that has legitimately been on the table. It's like the had, Democrats have been pretty, uh, you know, I guess I would say, entrenched on opposing that, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, a lot of times here in the hallways and my ways at the state capitol, a lot of times mm -hmm. somebody will kind of off the cuff throw something out there and see what the reaction is going to be. So uh, kind of testing the waters, if I use that term. And I may, that may be what is happening in this case. Um, I don't think there's been much of a response on it. But, uh, you know, a lot of times you're trying to move a, a certain agenda forward. And uh, you just kind of throw it out there and see what happens. Sometimes you get a positive feedback, say, well, yeah, that's a good idea. I never thought of that. Or uh, completely the opposite, say, absolutely not. We would never do that. All right, one more question, folks. The Democrats just told us that, Nate, you know, you, got the, you guys would like to highlight the governor's record on unemployment, but the Democrats just got done telling us that we have the third slowest growing uh, uh, job numbers in the country. Is there any response to that? I mean, the numbers of, we get this 25% change, as you point out, but we're still down at the bottom of the pack when we look at us in the national, national Well, I mean, that, that might also be the case where other states had higher higher unemployment rates, other factors that went into it. If you necessarily compare an apples to apples, we, we didn't all start at the same starting point at 8%. Now we're down to 6.2%. I mean, let's look at the reality, the context within which we're talking about here in the state of Maine. The job growth in Maine is the third slowest in the nation, is what they're saying. Well, I, I mean, I don't necessarily believe that that's the case. I think if you're talking about what is the participation in terms of the job market versus people that are simply dropping out of the, the, the job search, I mean, I think those are important factors. And I think that the important, um, and again, I think one of you might even correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but the recent report on the uh, Maine having the fastest income growth in New England, I think I saw that not too long ago. Uh, again, that's an important factor uh, to be looking at. But, you know, let's recognize that Maine has, has changed over the last 15 years. We have lost tens of thousands of manufacturing jobs um, over the last 15 years. How do you replace those kinds of jobs? I mean, up in my neck of the woods in Newport, you know, Guilford of Maine is downsized. Dexter Shoe Companies left the area. A lot of these, you know, companies that had, you know, 100, 200, 300 jobs, that, you know, have left the region. And so, you know, you're essentially having to replace those jobs with entrepreneurs. People that are going to school, going to the community colleges, they're becoming electricians, uh, they're becoming plumbers to, to go out and start their own businesses, uh, particularly in the rural part of the state. Um, and so it, this is going to be something in terms of the transition of the economy that's going to take time. I just like to add that uh, down in my Senate district, one of the towns I represent is the town of North Berwick. Uh, that's where Pratt Wendy is located. Uh, last, uh, two years ago, we put together an initiative to um, create a partnership between Pratt and Whitney right. and the community colleges. Uh, in this particular instance, it's Seahawk County Community College. They put together a program, a, a course, that's going to teach these young folks, well, middle-aged folks too, as well, uh, the fine arts of uh, uh, very precision metal cutting, which Pratt and Whitney needs. I was at one of their um, employee appreciation days a few years ago, and they disclosed that they're going to start manufacturing a brand new jet engine the F-35 jet engine. And they had 925 new job opportunities for that plant. And they couldn't fill them because they couldn't find qualified folks to take those jobs. Well, through, through the efforts of the Maine legislature, the Elk County Community College, and Pratt Whitney, we put together this program. It's up and running, it's working. And last year, I was at the Employee Appreciation Day again. They always invite 
some politician, and I'm the closest one, so they always invite me. I'm always there for it. But in any event, uh, I was talking to the CEO of the company, and uh, he was saying, you know, this would have happened in any other state except Maine. But you guys, once you heard the opportunity, we jumped on it, we ran with it, and we scored a touchdown. And that being, these, these young folks are learning a trade. I toured the, the, uh, the uh, training facility in South Sanford. It's right across from the Sanford Airport. And I toured that facility, and I asked the, uh, the instructors, I said, well, how do you start these young people off? He said, we start them off like they know nothing. And by the time they go through a two-year course, they're really knowledgeable. And this um, very fine, uh, close tolerance metal cutting industry. And when they leave that two-year course, they start out for the job at $15 an hour, plus a full benefit package. And uh, I know a lot of folks, because my, my hometown being Wells, is very close to an upper neighboring town. And I know a lot of folks in my, my hometown that work there at Crack My Lake. And it's a, it's a great it's a great employer. All right, Chris, real quick, then we got to go. Can I just add, though, before? No, I think that that's what we're going to be one of the, the things that I hope the governor talks about tomorrow is going to be young people, because I, I think the point that you're talking about is exactly correct. Um, I was in a meeting where uh, one of the uh, leading executives of Pratt he said, you know, we're going to be hiring 100 people a year for the next five years. You know, you, you talk about the, the uh, linesman program at Kennebec County Community College, where these folks go, they learn, become linemen, and those people more or less have jobs ready and waiting for them, you know, at Amera now. Um, or central being power. But there is going to have to be a recognition that young people probably can't just come out of school um, and go find a job. They're going to have to go to a community college. And that's the, really the path forward. And I think you may hear a little bit about, about that tomorrow from the governor as well. It's an election year, and uh, you know, tomorrow night is arguably one of the biggest political spectacles of this year. To what degree do you think uh, what the governor says tomorrow night is important to voters, and what do Republicans like you guys running for office need him to say? Well, I'd like, I'd like to make one comment about that. The State of the Union address is not a political venture. The State of the Union is addressed to bring the citizens of Maine up to speed of what the administration is currently doing. And I believe that's part of our Constitution that the governor do this, is to bring everybody up to speed as to what his plans are, his successes in the past. As far as that being a political event, I would, uh, I would say it's not. Uh, it's, one of those, it's one of those processes that has to be met every single year to bring the main people up to speed on what the government's doing. All right. Thank you very much.